God's grace and his peace to you from our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. We probably have heard many Christmas sermons. The beautiful message of a baby born in Bethlehem. Born of Mary. We may have heard about the animals. We may have heard about the shepherds and about the angels. These various messages should all be pointing us one direction. To the Almighty God the creator of the universe, who now takes on his creation. God takes on flesh and blood for a purpose, for you. Notice God's choice of how he is going to come to this world. He doesn't come to this world in a form of an animal, maybe like a golden retriever or a panda, those animals dearly loved by today's world. But instead, he chooses to come into this world with human flesh and blood. And that shows us his purpose. His purpose to redeem humanity. To redeem you. Yes, God takes on flesh and blood for you. From the angel's announcement to Mary... That a virgin will give birth to a, to a baby boy in Bethlehem. What does this all mean as we hear these various Christmas accounts? It means you are loved and cherished by God Almighty. So let's begin with the end in mind. To help us focus upon today. What the world sees in Bethlehem actually changes everything because God's ancient promise was fulfilled and will continue to be fulfilled until the end. So what does the end look like? What is the reason why God, the creator of the universe, has to take on flesh and blood? Let's look at Revelation for a moment. From Revelation chapter 11, verse 15. Then the seventh angel blew his trumpet, and there were loud voices in heaven saying, The kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. The kingdom of the world shall become the kingdom of our Lord. Did we not understand that after Adam and Eve sinned, God's beautiful creation was now separated from God because of sin? So what would God do? God would become his creation. In order to change that creation, in order to redeem his creation from the kingdom of the world back to the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ, in which Christ will reign forever and ever. The world will never be taken back from Christ. So God does take on human flesh and blood. Not a cat flesh and blood. Not a dog, flesh and blood, but human flesh and blood. St. Paul reminds us in Colossians chapter 1, verse 19, For in Jesus, all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell. I want to put a special emphasis and notice on all the fullness of God. Because very often in today's world, we like to shortchange God, so to speak. There were many heresies at the time that Christianity was continuing to grow and actually still exist today. And these heresies take on the form that they look at the baby Jesus born in Bethlehem as we see underneath the Christmas tree, and, we, and they think, it's just another baby. No, this is not just another baby. This is true God. But then they struggle with the human flesh and blood and going, well, it can't be really full God. Maybe it's only partial God. And the answer is no. This is full God. 
so what does it mean to have this precious little baby who's truly the fullness of God? I want you to consider the following in the illustration. We know that money does not grow on trees, right? So we are used to the concepts of budgets. You know, there's only so much money to go around and to spend, especially during this Christmas time. We might feel that pinch a little bit later in January. And then part of our thinking might be, well, of course, unless if you're the government, right? Then you can just sort of print a little bit more. But not even notice what happens if you print more. There's a fear that the money that we have already will be devalued. Whether you're running out of money or devaluing that money, these are real fears. And sometimes our world takes these real impressions and superimposes them upon this little baby born in Bethlehem. Can he really be God? The full God? Can all the fullness of God really be contained in flesh and blood? And the answer is yes. Just like the idea, can God hear all the prayers of his saints, even if we all spoke them at the same time? Again, the answer is yes. I struggle with two people talking to me at the same time, but I'm not God. That little baby born in Bethlehem is God. You see, God's love is not diminished by sharing it with more people. Just like the sun. The sun shines upon the earth, and the sun continues to shine, and it is not lessened in any way if the world's population increases, nor is the sun greater in any way if the world's population decreases. All the fullness of God, His love, His forgiveness for all people, is seen as Jesus is born in Bethlehem. God is not diminished nor devalued in any way. The complete fullness of God. So once we understand this little baby is the fullness of God, Christ Jesus, then we are ready to kind of dive into a little bit more of our gospel reading. John writes in John chapter 1, verse 16, For from his fullness, which we just covered, we all have received grace upon grace. Now comes the gifts. Once we understand the fullness of God in that little baby, God now gives us these gifts. You have received grace. So now let me go back to that Revelation chapter 11, verse 15 passage. The kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ. We know how it's going to end. For all the universe, this has not yet been realized. This will all happen on the last day. So the universe is still waiting for that still in, an, in anticipation for Christ to return again. But for you, right here, right now, this gift, this Christmas gift, is for you. God has taken on flesh and blood to redeem you. You who were once of this world, now through this little baby born in Bethlehem, you belong to Christ. You are now children of God. You have received grace. And not just grace, but grace even more. Grace upon grace. So what does it mean, besides being a baptized child of God, that grace, even more grace, comes upon us? Let me illustrate again with an interesting internet meme I recently saw. It was a picture of packing material that you, know, you sort of put into a box that would keep the item in the box from not moving around as you were shipping it and so that the item wouldn't break. The package material was in a bag and the bag was labeled 
void fill? Well, I guess the label kind of does describe what the material was supposed to do. But somebody had a little bit more of an interesting sense of humor and a little bit more fun with that and decided to title that picture of void fill with a little bit more. And the caption had said this, I had no idea you could buy this. I was just using alcohol instead. Yes, we have a world. We live in a world that understands there is a void that needs to be filled and is trying to fill it with things of this world. The world will try many ways to fill the void of their lives. The void that was there because of sin. But God has a better way. Grace upon grace. And it's not packaging stuffing, but it is this little baby born in Bethlehem. Notice as this baby grows up, Jesus, what he even says of himself in John chapter 7, verse 37. On the last day of the feast, the great day, Jesus stood up and cried out, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. From that void, the body understands there's a thirst. Now, the little Christ child comes in. And what happens to that void? You now have an abundance that forms a river. Now we get the understanding of what grace upon grace means. It is Christmas. God, the fullness of God, takes on human flesh and blood for you to change you from the kingdom of this world to the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ. And he shall reign forever and ever. One little last point to kind of consider. I want to go back to Adam and Eve for a moment. Adam and Eve are two special human beings out of all of humanity. Why? They were not born into this world, but they were created. God made Adam out of the dust of the earth and Eve from Adam's ribs. At the time that they were walking around on the earth before they sinned, they had a very close relationship with Christ. But now, of course, sin comes, and there's that separation. And we feel that separation. But I want you to consider something. I want you to consider how nearer is Christ to us than Adam and Eve And that Eve even was even to her husband, Adam. Because Christ was born into this world to take on our flesh and blood. This closeness of Christ, who is with us and in us, is described in John chapter 1, verse 14 in our gospel reading, And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we have seen his glory. Glory is the only son from the father, full of grace and truth. And then our theme verse for today. For from his fullness we all have received grace upon grace. This is our Savior. Born in Bethlehem. True God. So... We dare not lose that message, but instead to continue to hang on to that message. And so now let's take out that little insert and sing that third stanza of Silent Night, Holy Night. As we remember, and we dare not let the world diminish it in any way, as that stanza will close, Jesus, Lord, at thy birth. He was Lord before the angel's announcement to get to, from uh, Gabriel to Mary. He is Lord even at the birth, and he will be Lord forever and ever. So let's join in singing Silent Night.
silent night, holy night, Son of God, love's pure light, radiant beams from thy holy face. With the dawn of redeeming grace, Jesus, Lord, at thy birth, Jesus, Lord, at thy birth. Yes, Jesus is Lord at his birth. In the holy name of Jesus, amen. Now the peace of God that surpasses all our understanding will continue to guard your hearts and your minds. In Christ Jesus our Lord, amen.